Coming up in this episode, Copenhagen Docs Film Festival, TBEX Europe in Copenhagen, Womex 2010, and much, much more. I'm Tim. And I'm Sabina, and welcome to MyDenmarkTV.com. This episode of MyDenmarkTV.com is made possible by CopenhagenClicks.com. Featuring the largest collection of Danish websites covering all the practical aspects of your stay in Denmark, enabling you to be much more efficient and productive and get so much more out of your time here. Well, right off the top, I think we need to give a little shout out to all of you who were kind enough to give us a like through Facebook for our recent street dining episode. I think there's around 100 likes. I think so. Which is by far the record for any of our episodes. So thanks very much for that. We appreciate it. Keep it up, guys. And actually, for those of you who haven't watched the episode yet, check it out right after this. It's good fun. Yes. So now, on to what's up for this week. Copenhagen Docs is the largest documentary film festival in Scandinavia. It features over 200 documentaries, runs over 10 days this year from November 4th to the 14th. And every year you can be sure it is a fantastic program. Very inspiring. And you know what? They actually even also have some professional seminars. Five days of professional seminars during this festival. Okay. So there's a lot to do. Yeah. And to give you an idea of just how popular it is, last year there was over 37,000 tickets sold to Copenhagen Docks. So it really is something. And you know what? This actually makes me think about all those cinemas around Copenhagen that are not the primary cinemas. Yeah. Which is the Grand Theater and Dalma Theater and Gloria Bio. Yeah. And yeah. they will be featured in this festival and they are definitely worth going there because they have this really unique um, kind of old yeah. atmosphere. It's a real cinema atmosphere. It is. I mean, that's actually why we chose Festivovo right behind us to film. That's a good example of, of that. My personal favorite is actually Postus Teatro right downtown. And that is really like stepping back in time to go there. You can have your beer and a glass and then you take about three steps and sit in the very old seats. It's a very nice experience, worth checking out if you, uh, if you can. I should also mention, we've got the link to the program for this year's festival right below the episode on mydenmarktv.com. Right now it's only in Danish, but they do normally publish an English version as well, if you prefer that. Next great event coming up is Womix 2010, which is all about world music. This is primarily a trade fair, um, but I do also know that there's a lot about concerts there. Womix runs from the 28th till the 31st of October in Form, downtown Copenhagen. Yes, I also need to say a little bit about the music aspect, because that's taking place in the DR Concert Hus, uh, which is a great venue for this kind of thing. And there's a program going from October 28th to the 30th. Mm -hmm. Every day starts at 1 o'clock and runs till late in the evening. All kinds of world music, well worth checking out, and it has nothing to do with the, the trade aspect of Womex. So if you're into world music, you simply just have to be there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we should mention is one we mentioned last week as well, which is TBEX Europe 2010, which mm -hmm. is happening in Copenhagen. And that's a conference fair for travel bloggers, primarily, or people interested in that. And there's a great lineup of bloggers who've had quite a bit of success travel blogging, uh, speaking and workshops and so on. It's very cheap to get in and uh, we've got a discount code as well for you if you're interested in joining. It's uh, below the episode, mm -hmm. so check that out. And I do believe that you will be appearing yes. at the TBEX, Tim. Yes, yes, I, I am <laughs> actually going to be on, uh, one the, of the, speakers, right? yes, on the video blogging panel right. talking about My Denmark TV, naturally. So that should be fun. And of course, the rest of us will be there just participating because yeah. this is what we do. That is. So as you can see, we have a lot of events for you here in the last days of October. You should go check them out. Definitely. It's a busy time in Copenhagen, apparently. And cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so over to Vladimir. Hi, I'm Vladimir Chen. Today I would like to share with you the online way how you can get your digital photos developed and how you can compare different digital photo services in Denmark. The website is called digiphotopreset.dk and it compares three photo services such as pixum.dk, photo.com and snapfish.dk. The guys behind DigiPhotoPrisa have done a comparison test on things like quality check, delivery time, delivery costs, prices, usability of the service, shipping costs 
and most importantly how many photos each service provides for free with an order. Sometimes you can get up to 50 pictures for free and all of the information they're sharing is on the front page. Of course this information may change over time, that's why you need to make sure to double check that on each individual website. In addition to these three, you can also use Vertex Photo Service, which I have personally used. It's a bit more expensive than those three, but definitely a good option. All you need to do is go on their website, choose a service, locate pictures on the hard drive and send an order. Next thing you will do is go and pick, your, pick up your photos at the local store after they send you an email. It's as simple as that. If you like this resource, check out copenhagenclicks.com, a website with lots of similar resources and video tutorials to show you how to benefit from those useful clicks. That's it for this week, enjoy! Thanks Vladimir! Oh, and by the way Tim, do you remember a sweet deal he mentioned last week? Yes, great website! I went in and I bought myself a three-course dinner for 189 crowns at a very, very nice restaurant downtown. That's... Go in there Saturday. Yeah, I only learned about that website myself, so I think it's pretty cool. I mean, if you hook up and you got a new deal every day. Yeah. It's awesome. It's great. <laughs> so moving on to the next segment, Julie has a little surprise, which if you've been visiting our Facebook page, you might be able to figure out. Take it away, Julie. Thank you, Jim. Well, before I introduce a new team member, let's talk about how to write a good cover letter. Basically, in Denmark, a good cover letter should be around one page where you explain clearly your motivation for applying the job and why the company should hire you. Therefore, it's really important that you have to focus on the benefits that a company will get by hiring you. Secondly, don't be afraid to use your creativity to make an outstanding cover letter. It's really about making your personality shine through so that you can catch their attention. So please, don't use a standard cover letter because it just won't pay off. Now, it's time to bring in a new team member. Andre, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. So, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Absolutely. As you can see from my body language, I come from the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. But I've been living here for over 10 years now. That's why I'm a little bit rusty. Well, I don't think so, but we can talk about it later on. So, Andre, today we're talking about how to write a very good cover letter. So, what would be your advice? Well, Julie, I think a good point is don't lie about your competences. What goes around, comes around. But if you really want a killer cover letter, don't tell what you can do. Show what you have done. Give some real life examples of your car competences. Yeah, I agree. I think it's also about which angle you focus on, right? Because personally, if I apply for a job and it requires something from me that I haven't had you know, any experience of, I would focus on my potential and you know what my other skills can help me to be successful in the job. That's a good idea, Julie. Another thing that I would recommend is check, double check your application. Yeah. If you had the chance, ask a couple of friends to read through your application for spelling mistakes. That would be a very good idea. Well, entering, I think that's it from us this week. Yes, it is. It's now back to Tim and Sabini. <laughs> so, this week's question comes from Batsu Gurel Sakan. Is that a real name? <laughs> no, Come on, we'll Tim. see. <laughs> and it's actually poetically timed because it has just started raining. So, it rains every two days in Denmark, and I've been looking for a nice raincoat and a rain boots everywhere in Stroll, Magazine, Ilm, etc., but couldn't find any favorite ones. Where should I go? Well, Sabina. I see that you're not wearing rain boots today. I thought this was the other day. It yeah. wasn't raining, that's why. Well, you know, it's a, it is a fashion accessory in Denmark. I'm sure you have a pair in your closet. Actually, Tim, I don't. That cannot be and true. By the way, where are your boots? You've been here for nine years and you don't have a pair? Well, mm. in 10 years in Denmark, I, I don't have any rain boots or rain pants. But yeah. I did look into the matter a little mm -hmm. and uh, actually the results that I found is that I would check out Ilum and Magasang like Betsul did. Uh -huh. He so, was in the wrong department maybe. Maybe he was in the wrong department but uh, what he does need to look for, or she, is uh, the Danish brand called Ilse Jakobsen. She's a Danish designer, mm -hmm. quality rain boots. Yes. Or this Scot Scottish brand, Hunter. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there are many other. I mean, just check on the on the link below. Yeah. And there's also one Danish shoe store that I thought of, which is called Skoring, and they mm -hmm. have a great variety, and a little lower on the price than Ilse Jacobsen and Hunter. So those are maybe the ones you want to check out. Now, yeah. on the raincoat, you have one, Tim. I don't. See, here I can brag. I have a very, very nice raincoat. <laughs> and I bought it at a very regular sports store, and that's where you can find raincoats all over the country. Well, there you have it. And for asking that question, Batsu gets a 30 minute consultation with the My Denmark TV team. And you too can benefit from a consultation. Just click on the link below, it says consult with My Denmark TV. And if you have any comments, be sure to leave a comment below. In particular, if you're going to see a documentary film at the Docs Festival with over 200 to choose from, it's great to get some advice about which one's the best. So leave a comment below. Everyone would love to hear it, I'm sure. And okay. you can you always... Can <laughs> <laughs> you can always find us on facebook.com slash mydenmarktv or you can follow us on Twitter. Tim, let's go get hot chocolate with Mr. Bobo. Yes, yes, let's do that. Okay, bye. See you next week. No, this way. And if you didn't have a chance to see this episode before, check it out right after this and keep up the work, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>